So um, welcome to another uh, Unit 2 video on uh, National 5 Chemistry. Uh, this is a summary video where we're going to be comparing the different homologous series. So looking for what are the similarities, what are the differences, and then I've got a series of open-ended questions that often um, use this information as the basis for uh, the answer. So when we compare our homologous series, some of the uh, things that we just need to be able to remember. Uh, so obviously we need to know the names. So the five homologous series in National 5 are alkanes, alkenes, cycloalkanes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids. We need to know the general formula for each one of these. It is CNHTN for alkanes, CNH, sorry, CNH2N plus two for alkanes, CNH2N for alkenes and cycloalkanes. For alcohols, it's CNH2N plus 1OH. And for carboxylic acids, it is CNH2N plus 1COOH. Remember with carboxylic acids that if you've got something that has six carbons, one of those carbons is part of the COOH group. So if it had six carbons in total, one is in the COOH, and that means that CNN is five. So it's very easy to get a little bit mixed up when it comes to the general formula of carboxylic acid. When it comes to the functional group, um, you need to know these because you may be asked to circle functional groups in a molecule. So with alkanes and cycloalkanes, there's no specific functional group. Um, it's just saturated single bonds between carbon and carbon or carbon and hydrogen. In an alkene, the functional group is the carbon-carbon double bond. So if you're circling that group, what you want to circle is um, both carbon atoms and the double bond between them. You can sometimes get the mark for just circling the double bond, but specifically, you should circle the two carbons and the double bond between them. For alcohols, the functional group is called hydroxyl. You need to know that name, and it is the OH group. So if you're circling, the functional group, it is just the O and the H. For carboxylic acids, the functional group is carboxyl. Uh, if you're ever stuck for what it's called, remember it is the first part of the word carboxylic acids. And um, it is the COOH group. And remember, if we're drawing the uh, functional group out uh, for um these uh what it is 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 sorry my pen's not working for some reason uh the functional group is uh c double bond o o h and then there is a another bond coming out of the carbon that's where it gets its four bonds remember that you've got that double bond and you've got that when it comes to the ending of each of these, well, alkanes end in ANA, alkenes end in ENA, cycloalkanes also end in ANE, but you need to put cyclo at the start. Alcohols always end in anol. And whenever you're indicating the position that the alcohol is on, you put a number between an and all. For example, prop, an, to, all. For carboxylic acids, their ending is anoic acid. Do not forget to write the word acid at the end. You do need to specify. It's not just propanoic, it is propanoic acid. Now, whenever we are looking at our homologous series, there are some trends in physical properties that are the same between uh, the homologous series. The main one being that as the molecule gets bigger, the melting and boiling point increases. And this is true for alkanes, alkenes, cycloalkenes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids. The reason, stronger intermolecular forces. So as the molecule gets bigger, the intermolecular forces get uh, stronger. When it comes to reactivity, you need to be able to identify what reactions each homologous series can do. So alkanes 
are only capable of combustion. Alkenes can do combustion, but they also do a whole host of addition reactions. So remember, you can react in an addition reaction um, your alkene with bromine, that is your test for saturation. You can do a hydrogenation, that is reacting it with hydrogen. You can do a hydration, which is reacting with, with reacting it with water and is what produces alcohols. And you can also react it with things like hydrochloric acid. With cycloalkanes, uh, the only reaction that it, they can do at National 5 is combustion. And the same with alcohols um, at National 5 combustion. If you stick around to do higher chemistry, you will see that alcohols are capable of doing some other types of reactions. Carboxylic acids are by far the most reactive. Um, they can do combustion reactions, though it's not uh, frequent that you actually burn carboxylic acids. It, the more common reactions are them reacting with bases, so metal oxides, metal hydroxides and metal carbonates to produce a salt and water, and in the case of carbonates, also carbon dioxide, and they can react with reactive metals to produce salt and hydrogen. So you can use the reactivity to tell apart particular homologous series. So the first thing, what we're going to pick is particular homologous series and what are the characteristics of those groups. So the first set that we're going to look at are our alkanes and cycloalkanes. They do not dissolve in water. They will combust to form carbon dioxide and water and they will not decolorize bromine water. They are saturated, so if you add bromine solution or bromine water or bromine to um, an alkane or a cycloalkane, it will stay orange brown. Always specify the color if you're talking about that test. When it comes to telling apart alkanes and cycloalkanes, you actually cannot do it without knowing the chemical formula. When it's uh, coming to alkenes, well, the characteristics of alkenes, they do not dissolve in water. They will combust to form water and carbon dioxide. But whenever you do a bromine test for saturation, you will see that the orange-brown colour goes colourless, or we describe this as decolorizing bromine water. But it is best to specify that the bromine goes from orange-brown to colourless. In fact, alkenes are the only homologous series um, where you will get decolorization. All the other homologous series will stay orange brown when you add bromine water. When it comes to alcohols, well, alcohols, they're different in that they do dissolve in water. But they will also combust to form carbon dioxide and water. And just like alkenes and cycloalkenes, they do not um, decolorize bromine water, so bromine will stay orange-brown. In fact, uh, the only way to tell apart an alkane from an alcohol is whether or not it dissolves in water. Alkanes do not dissolve, alcohols do. Then finally, we have our carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids do dissolve in water. You can also use universal indicator or a pH meter to prove that they are acidic. And then you can do some of the reactions. Um, it's best um, to not choose to react it with a metal oxide or a metal hydroxide because there are not obvious signs of that reaction happening. It's much better to test it with a metal carbonate because you will see bubbles and you can prove that that gas being given off is carbon dioxide by testing it with lime water and seeing if it turns it milky or cloudy. Similarly, you could react it with a metal and if you react a carboxylic acid with metals, you will see bubbles and you can test that gas to prove that it is hydrogen because it should give a squeaky pop when lit or ignited. Remember, that's only going to be with metals above hydrogen on the back page of your data booklet. So to summarise um, how we can uh, tell certain uh, homologous series apart, well, alkanes are not soluble in water, they will stay orange when you test them with bromine water, and they do not react with bases. Alkanes are not soluble in water, they will turn bromine water colourless, 
and they will not react with bases. Cycloalkanes do not dissolve in water. They will keep bromine water orange, so there won't be any change, and they also do not react with bases. When it comes to alcohols, they are soluble in water. When you test uh, the bromine water with it, the bromine water will stay orange, and they will not react with bases. And when we have carboxylic acids, they are soluble in water. They also will keep bromine water orange and it won't decolorize. However, they will react with bases. So from this table, you can see that with the exception of alkanes and cycloalkanes, which have exactly the same properties in this table, all the other groups have one thing that separates them from the other groups. For alkanes and cycloalkanes, it's the fact that they are insoluble and don't do any reactions. For alkanes, it is the fact it's the only one that turns bromine water colourless. For alcohols, it's the fact that they don't do any reactions, but they are soluble in water. And for carboxylic acids, it's the fact that they will react with bases. Now, a knowledge of those different carboxylic, uh, sorry, those different homologous series is important because it's very frequently asked for you to compare um, different homologous series. And I'm going to show you lots of different um, open-ended questions that make use of this knowledge. So one we've got here is saying a student is given three different compounds, each containing carbon. Now, your immediate thoughts might be carbon, talk about diamond and graphite, and absolutely I would in this question. But it just says compounds containing carbon, and all homologous series are compounds containing carbon. So you can add a lot of information uh, about identifying the compounds by talking about, well, I know what alkanes do. I know how they react, I know what they're soluble in. I know alkenes, how they react, what they're soluble in. Alcohols, uh, how they react, what they're soluble in. And carboxylic acids, what they're soluble in and how they react as well. And if you just talked about the homologous series and even forgot to mention uh, graphite and diamond, you can easily put in a lot of marks. So just by saying everything you know about uh, the different homologous series, that table on the previous slide, you could get full marks in this question, no problem. This question is a little bit different uh, because what it's asking is it shows you a molecule and it says it's used in shellac nail polish and it says comment on the chemistry. So the first thing I would do in a question like this is, what do I notice about the molecule? Well, I've got this. So that means it's an alkene. It's also got this. So it's a carboxylic acid. Just identifying those two functional groups and saying that's a a carboxyl group shows an understanding of that. Then you could talk about chemistry. Well, what's that going to do? It'll decolorize uh, bromine uh, water. And this one, well, it's a carboxylic acid, so it'll react with uh, metal oxides, hydroxides, carbonates, and metals in general. You could also say it's going to be acidic and talk about that means that the pH is going to be less than 7 or talk about the universal indicator colour that it would be. And also because it's mostly a hydrocarbon, you could talk about it combusting and the products of combustion being water and carbon dioxide. So here we've got uh, another open-ended question 
where it's asking you to distinguish between ethanoic acid and pure water. So this one is just carboxylic acids. So I would probably want to start off just drawing out ethanoic acid. Now that might seem um, something that it's not asking you to do, but remember this question is just testing your knowledge and understanding of chemistry. Knowing that ethanoic acid looks like that, that it is a carboxylic acid, can get you marks. Then you can talk about its reactions. So what it will react with, its pH value. And then for water, all you need to do is talk about its pH and say that it will not do those reactions. And that can get you the marks. OK. Then we've got another question. Now, this one's a bit uh, similar to the previous question we had. And it's asking you to comment on the physical and chemical properties. Well, I would identify that as being carboxyl. And then talk about all the reactions. Talk about the pH. Then you might want to say, well, the rest of it is very hydrocarbon. So you might want to talk about combustion. And then you could also maybe say, well, will it be soluble? Because you could say this should be soluble, but all the rest of it should be not. So even if you're not able to answer the question, if you show that you know that carboxylic acids dissolve in water, but these other things that just contain carbon and hydrogen are not very soluble, that's showing your understanding. But you can see particularly if you know a lot about the reactivity of carboxylic acids, a lot of these questions have just relied on that. And finally, here we've got a question where you've been asked to identify um, from three bottles that have lost their labels, which one was an alcohol, which one was an alkene, and which one was a carboxylic acid. So obviously things to talk about, solubility in uh, water, you could talk about pH, you could talk about doing the bromine water test. And what would you see with each one? Now remember, every time you talk about a reaction, you need to say what you would see. And also you would talk about maybe reacting with a uh, metal or metal carbonate. And then for each one of these tests, say, well, for solubility in water, the alcohol would be soluble, the alkene wouldn't, the carboxylic acid would. You could even write this out, make a table, and uh, say all these different properties, and then just tick, or write what would happen for each one. Because you do not need to answer an open-ended question in paragraphs and sentences. You can draw diagrams, you can draw tables. And for that question, I personally would have drawn a table. So I hope uh, that this video um, shows you that it's really important to be able to compare the different properties of the homologous series. And you can see that um, these open-ended questions, even though they're written in different ways, they can be answered in very similar approaches. So hopefully that's going to make some open-ended questions for you a lot less scary and also um, it'll help solidify your knowledge of the different homologous series. So thank you and apologies that this video ended up close to 20 minutes long.